Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part seven of my XML video tutorial series. This is going to be the final part, so you better believe I'm going to be covering a lot of things here. First thing I'm going to do is go and open up the schema file that we created in the last part of the tutorial. However, I'm going to do it in a new way. I'm going to right-click on it and go Open With, and then I'm going to go Other. Now, something that's built inside of Eclipse is a schema editor, and it allows you to do all kinds of really cool things. And it's right here on your screen. And if you can't see this, view it full screen. I'm going to hit OK. And now you can see everything here that we've created in the last part of the tutorial. However, if I come down way down here in the bottom left-hand corner and click on Design, you're going to see that a much more interesting window here opens up on our screen. And we can zoom in on it. You can see here's all of the different elements that we created previously. And here are all the different types that we created previously. And we're also going to create some groups and some attributes and a whole bunch of other different things in this part of the tutorial. But I'm going to first jump back into source because one of the questions I received is, is there a way to make an element that could accept more than one data type? And yes, indeed, there is. And one way you could create something like that is to use a union. I and mean, I'm just going to create here a simple type, just like we've been using before. And let's say, for example, we went inside of here and we were grabbing and storing the last tweet. Well, let's say we also were storing the last thing the person put on Facebook, for example. So what I'm going to put inside of here is message to fans. And this is in the XML schema file. And then inside of there, we're going to create a union. And that just simply means it's going to accept more than one type of data. I'll just type in member types is equal to and then inside of here you would put the different types that you would want to accept and like I said I didn't make a Facebook message but you could make one in pretty much exactly the same way that we made the Twitter message and there you go right there you would be able to create those customized data types inside of here now another thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna jump over here to source again and I'm going to take my schema file and I'm going to create an XML file based off of it so I'm just gonna go new and then click other and then inside of the little wizard that opens up click on XML file click on next and I'm gonna call this baseball players as well and then click next and then this is the important part right here where it says create an XML file from an XML schema file we want to click on that and then we're gonna click on next and then we have to locate the schema file so we're going to go in the source directory baseball players right there click on next and everything that pops up is fine so click on finish and you can see right here it automatically created that XML file for us and I'm just going to clean things up here a little bit but I don't really need to change anything one thing I am going to do though is I'm going to save this and then close it and then come right back over here again baseball players XML and I'm going to go open with come down here to other and then in this situation I'm going to open that up in an XML editor that's built into Eclipse all of these things are built into Eclipse. Just make sure you click on XML Editor instead of XML Schema Editor and then click on OK. Now, just like before, we're going to be able to come down here to Design, click on that, and automatically it's going to allow us to put all types of different information inside of this file. And just to do that, just come in here and go Add Child, and then we could do Batting Average, for example, and it's automatically going to throw it inside of there. And then we would be able to come in here and edit all kinds of different information. Just going to have to come over here and then create a Batting Average. So let's just say, 0.245. Doesn't matter what we do. Hit enter. And then if we bump back out here to source, you're going to see that it automatically added that directly into the XML file. Now, of course, inside of here, you can still edit the XML files just like we did before. NTT, baseball player, and then type in player name, and then type in Paul Smith. I don't know. I'm just making up something. And you can do it either way. And then if you save that and then bounce over into the design section, you're going to see that player name automatically updates inside of there, and there's Paul Smith. So there's multiple different ways to add all of this different XML information into the XML file after you create it. But I'm going to jump back over into this editor and show you exactly how to create all of these different types inside of here. So we're going to jump into design again. And the next thing I want to do is I want to make a complex type. Now, unlike simple types, a complex type is going to allow you to contain child elements as well as attributes. And to start off here, I'm going to start real simple. Let's say, for example, you want to define an element that only contains one data type, value exactly like a simple type element would. However, it is going to allow you to add on an attribute unlike a simple content would. What we're going to do here to make life real simple is I'm just going to right click up inside of here and I'm going to click on add complex type and it shows up right here. Double click on it and there it is. Now I'm going to right click on this. Come 
come down here where it says set base type because you have to base all of your complex types off of types that already exist. Click on that. And then over here, it's going to show you all the different types that are available to you. Well, I'm going to base it off of an integer. And the only difference between an int and an integer is precision, just so you know that. You can use either one. I'm just going to use integer here. And there you can see the integer popped up right there. And now if you'd like to add an attribute as well to this guy, just right click on it and click on add attribute and then give it an attribute name. In this situation, I'm going to say home state like that. And I'm going to allow it to remain a string. Bounce out. We can file save it. And I sort of use the source and the design section both at the same time. And you can see way down here, everything's going to be defined inside of here. There's the attribute and the integer that we just created. However, I'm going to throw this inside of an element itself. So I'm just going to go excess element. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this part or cut it. Paste it inside of there. There's the element that's going to pop up. And there you go. You just created your first complex type that is going to be based off of integer and it's going to have an attribute. And it also would probably make sense to give it a good name like Earborn. And that is exactly what we got there. Now, if you would like to also create an element that will contain only elements, the perfect tag for you is going to be what is called the complex tag. And you're also going to use a new guy that's called sequence. And sequence defines the order the elements are expected to be in whenever a user would enter them. So here, I'm going to type everything in, even though it's a little bit slower. Excess element and I'm going to say the name is going to be equal to best friend and I'm in the schema file and then remember we're going to use a complex type and all of the code that is here on this screen is available on a link underneath the video you should get it because it's heavily commented and it'll help you really learn this stuff and then you're going to define using sequence the exact order that all this needs to be placed in here and then like I said before you could throw in as many elements as you want name first name and then remember you have to still define what the type is going to be which is going to be a string and then you need to close it off and then if we also want to add another element inside of there because that's the whole point of this let's just say last and then leave that be a string so that's exactly how you would define all that stuff and if you don't care how the elements are ordered it's real simple all you'd have to do inside of here is instead of putting sequence inside of there just put all inside of there instead and that would allow you to, to not care about the order that any of the elements are entered. And also, another thing, if you don't care about the order, but you definitely want these elements to be included, just inside of here, you're going to go min occurs, and then you could throw in one inside of there. And that's going to guarantee that those are going to be included inside of there. And then if you wanted to limit the number of these elements that would be listed, of course, in this situation, there would be only one. But if you, let's say you only wanted to have five last names total entered. Well, that's exactly how you do that, using max occurs. And both of these guys, by default, are one just so you know that as well. So there we are, we just created another one. So let's go create ourselves some more custom types. Okay, now the next one I'm gonna create is gonna also be a complex type. However, it's gonna be what we call a named type. And the reason why you would use a name type is whenever you wanted to define any type of data type you'd wanna use in your XML files. But however, you'd like them to be able to be used not once, but as many times as possible. See, these guys are going to only be used once. In this situation, we're gonna create ones that can be used multiple times. So just jump Jump into design and I'm just going to come in here and go add complex type again double click right here and then again I'm going to extend this guy so just right click on it come down here to set base type and I'm going to base this one off of a decimal just click on decimal click OK I've got that all set up now and then I'm also going to come in here and add an attribute to it and this is going to be year and then this is going to be data type and I'm just going to like I said before I'm just going to use int and the only difference between int and integer is precision int is a 32 bit an integer is supposed to be indefinite, but that's not really necessarily true. And if we bounce back over into our source, you can see here's our new complex type we created. And then I'm going to name this percent stat, and I can let everything else here be exactly the same. And now that I have percent stat created inside of here, I can actually use it as a data type. That's exactly what it is, just like I use decimal here. And in this situation, I'm just going to type it out. So excess, I'm going to call this a complex type and give it a name of batting stats. And then inside of here, I'm going to create a sequence. Again, it's just defining what you want to use and in what order you want them to be used. And then I'm going to throw an element inside of here. And the name is going to be batting average, right like that. And then my data type is going to be NTT BP percent stats, just like we had before, or actually stat, just like we've defined right here in this customized guy. Close off that element. 
And let's say I wanted to create another one of those guys. Easy enough, just do that. And then we'll just go on base percentage just to keep it short like that. And then leave this as percent stat. And there you go. Now you just used your customized type inside of a complex element that you've created here inside of your XML schema file. Now, if you'd also want to use batting stats as an element, but you'd also want to jump in here and add a couple more elements to it, that's also very easy to do. We're just going to go XS complex type name is equal to, and I'm going to call this more batting stats like that. I'm going to go XX complex content. Now remember, we need to extend using this guy right here. See, this is an element. You can use this just like anything. You can extend it just like you've extended other things. I'm going to go XX extension. What am I going to base it off of? Well, oh, I'm going to base it off of this guy right here, batting stats, which we just created. And then I'm going to type in a sequence right like this, and then throw another element inside of this. So this is, I'm making this about as complicated as possible just to cover just about everything. And there's slugging percentage, and then in this situation, I'm gonna type float. And there's the end of that element, there's the end of the sequence, and there you are. You just created a really complicated sort of system. This guy is using a customized data type, which you've created above, percent stat. And then you took that complicated element and you added slugging percentage to it as an additional element. So throwing in pretty much everything imaginable. Now, if you'd also like to use a group of elements throughout a document, well, we're actually going to go into the design. You don't need to. You can do it anywhere you want. But if you wanted to go into the design area, come down here to groups and click add group. There's a new one. Double click on it, and it's already going to have the sequence inside of here. And I'm just going to start adding some elements to it. So, add element. I'm going to call this at bat time, and it's going to be a date time type. Click on that. Come in here again. Add element at bat balls. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually tracking performance based off of pitchers and things like that. Add another element. You can come even here. You can add an element before you've defined another element. You can do whatever you want. At bat. Ks. That's also going to be an integer. And then we can go at bat result. And that's going to be a string. And there you go. You just created your group. Jump over into source. And I'm going to call this guy at bat group. And there you go. You just created a group that you can use throughout your whole entire schema file. Kind of cool. And then right here, I'm going to create the guy. So I'm going to go XS element and name. And in this situation, I'm going to take a picture and I'm going to put in the performance of the batter versus that picture. So I'm going to call this at bat picture like this. And again, this is a complex type. Then I'm going to take my group that I just defined, XS group. And then I need to reference the group just by plugging in the name of the group. So NTT EP at bat group. And it's going to throw all those elements inside of there for me to use. Close that off like that. And then I'm going to add an attribute to it. Like I said, I'm pulling out all the stops here. I'm going to give it a name of pitcher name. And that is going to be of type string. And if you want to require that this pitcher's name be entered every single time, you're going to say use required. And then, of course, you want to close that off. And there you go. You just create another element that is going to pull in all these elements from this group. And you can also create a group of attributes, just like you did here with the group of elements. Excess attribute. I think you can tell that it's easier to create all this stuff in the design view, but I'm creating it here just so that it's easier for you to understand exactly the nuts and bolts of what's going on. So here you are. We're going to create an attribute group. And you just got to fill it up with attributes. Let's say player height, and it's of type string. And then let's say that we want to also track their weight. There you go. And then this is going to be of type integer. And now, if you want to use this attribute group inside of an element, no problem. Just go excess element. Actually, I'll create this in the design view so you can see how that works. Click on design. And then I'm going to add an element here. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on add complex type, double click on it. And there it is. Right click on it. And then I'm going to click on add attribute group reference. And there you go. There was only one and it was smart enough to know to throw them both in there. Pretty cool. Jump back into the source. Scroll way down here. And there you go. The only thing I don't like about this is it throws everything on one line. But there might be a way to fix that. I just haven't come across it yet. And then if you would like to throw this inside of an element itself, no problem, just go excess, element, name is equal to, player, size, and then we'll just get rid of this, gone, and then take this closing bracket and throw it at the end. And if we file save this and jump over into Baseball Players XML, you can see here, whenever we go add child right here, all the different elements that we've just defined inside of our XML schema file. And I trust that you'll be able to understand exactly how to enter all those. If not, or if you need any help with that, 
Like I said, click on the link underneath and it not only will show you the finished XML schema file, but it's also going to show you the XML file. Leave any questions or comments below. Up next, I'm going to do a review of object-oriented programming and then right into design patterns like you guys asked. Till next time.